Alright guys, let me just start the video saying, <laughs> boy, what an episode it was today. I, for some people, I could definitely see today's episode being the titular episode of the series. <laughs> but, let's get right into it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Gary. Glad to see you're all back. And today, I bring you episode two of my Dress Up Darling. And boy, what, what an interesting episode it was. So let's dive right in. First off, let me preference this by saying Marin or Kitigawa in the show is really just the soul of this show so far. It's, she really just brightens up every single scene that she's in and really just enhances the story so far. She is honestly a joy to watch on screen. I think episode one did a great job of showing us Gojo's opinion and perspective on the world and how he views he would just be a Debbie Downer to everyone, how he would bring everything down. And then Kitagawa is just the complete opposite. That's just a super outgoing person, just all around fun to be around. And we're really just want to push you to be yourself and just be happy. And I think the dynamic between these two are really is really awesome, honestly. I think it's quite fun to watch. And you can see they're both coming out of their shells a bit. <laughs> Alright, but let's get into the meat and potatoes of the episode. Alright, the episode starts off where we left off in the last one. At the school, she's explaining... If I believe Shizuku-chan to him and her characteristics and that she's from an e-rogue, which <laughs> it's a very spicy game if you don't know. And she's explaining to Gojo all about these characteristics and he's freaking out. He is no otaku by any means of the word. <laughs> and just all this stuff is overwhelming for him. But he sees how passionate she is about it. And he decides to help her. So they plan a day for him to do that. So he's at home the next day with his grandfather doing his normal chores and all that. His grandfather went to go get a sewing machine for them. And who should come up to the door? Marin or Kitigawa. Of course she found him. She found out where he lived. So she had to come by and say, Yahoo! What's up? <laughs> So of course she comes by, because better late, or why wait to do something you want to do right now when you can do it now, you know? So of course she hops on in to the house, brings him a cake. What a thoughtful gift, of course. <laughs> Who would be mad if a beautiful girl came to their house with some cheesecake, am I right? Who would be upset by that? But anyway, yeah, he lets her in, and they start taking measurements, funny enough, and... You could tell right away where the episode's going. It was a very eye-opening episode. And of course, Gojo's freaking out. Because he can't take a girl's measurements. He's never even had a girl in his room before. So he's going crazy. He doesn't know what to do. And of course, she's teasing him the whole time. Making it more awkward for him. Like, oh, oh you, you can just sew or look up and down my leg. You can measure my legs. And my bust and all that. And of course he's freaking out. It's it's pretty funny, honestly. <laughs> you can tell she's having fun with him. And of course, as the, as the story progresses in the episode, you see that they're starting to get more comfortable. He has to slap himself in the face, actually, to say, hey, she's taking this seriously. I gotta think, take this seriously, too. You know, I can't be thinking pervy thoughts over here while she's here trying to do what she loves. So I gotta step up for her. So he does, and he finally can get her measurements. But now comes the interesting part. He has to get her bust. And if you've seen anime before like I have, you know that chaos ensues. <laughs> so of course he gets right in her face and he finally stems the courage from within him to get the measurements and she's just loving it the whole time you can tell she's just having so much fun with him during the entire experience 
And of course, he starts realizing, wow, maybe I'm being ridiculous. And just... <laughs> maybe I'm being ridiculous and overthinking things. Maybe I should just help her out. And of course, when we see that, is when she finally starts coming out of her shell. And we realize, oh, wait a minute. She was embarrassed the whole time. Because who wouldn't be embarrassed getting their naked body measured by al uh, almost a stranger, basically? <laughs> So it was a fun episode. Chaos ensued, of course. Lots of teasing. Just an all-around really fun show. Just puts a smile to your face. As I said pr earlier in the video, their dynamic is awesome. That he's just Mr. Gloom and Doom and she's Miss Positive. Always bringing people out of their shells and trying to push him to... Trying to push him to... Um, just be more outgoing, you know? Tell people how they feel. Tell people how he feels. And all, and it's just an all-around good time. And I gotta say, she really is the highlight of the show so far. It's just, she steals the show every time she's on screen. It's just very fun. You can tell Cloverworks had a lot of fun animating this show. And definitely one of the animators has a fetish. Because we stayed on that foot scene for a pretty long time. You, you can tell. They're like, man, I get to get paid to animate feet? What more could I want today? <laughs> but no, it was just an all-around good time. And the episode ends... <laughs> Actually, one of the funniest parts of the episode is when she gives him the two games as reference. So he has a good idea of what he needs to do in order to make this cosplay, what it's supposed to look like, all of its aesthetics and all that. So she lets him borrow the two games. And one of the funniest scenes by far in the whole episode is his grandfather walking in on him, just playing the games, and you just hear, ooh, ah, I'll never be the same again. And it's, it's just so funny. <laughs> we I feel like a lot of us have had awkward scenes like that in our lives. So it's just really funny to see something like that. But yeah, it's just, it was an all around good episode. And I'm really looking forward to episode three. I think the series will only go up from here. As I was saying before, Cloverworks makes really good series. They have a good habit of making very well animated series. So I'm quite looking forward to it. I imagine it will only go up from here. I can't imagine the show will go down in quality since it's such high quality already. And it's just fun, you know? What more do you want? What more could you need besides it being a fun, entertaining rom-com? Who doesn't like those? Take it from me, someone who doesn't like rom-com movies, but I love rom-com anime because they're just really sweet, wholesome, and they just, they warm your heart in a way, you know? We've had, we've all had rough times this year. And a show like this, I think, is exactly what we need to get us out of our funk. But yeah, let me know in the comments how you guys felt about this episode. <laughs> it's a very interesting episode. Lots of plot, if you know what I mean. Which, hey, I don't see a lot of people complaining about. Very interesting. It was a very titular episode. <laughs> but yeah, let me know in the comments how you guys felt about it. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And also, I guess, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more, what I can improve upon, and just honestly tell me how you feel. Like I keep saying in every video, I want this to be a community and a home for all of us. I want this to be a place we can all relax and chill at the end of the day and just talk about the stuff we love, whether it's anime, video games, movies, TV shows, all of that. I want it to just be a place where we can all gather and talk about what we love. What's better than that? But yeah, you guys let me know how you feel about it. Leave a like and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.